the beginning of a new mosaic pattern and a couple of new big knives starts well yesterday but today we're really getting going on it it was just a paper of doodles that i did thinking about some ideas based on previous patterns and that kind of led me to then um, make some things more definite on this paper and develop a plan um, as far as what billets i'm going to need to start with so i need to make these three billets this one's got a middle stripe of uh, 15 and 20 is going to get re-squared and squashed down and cut into two pieces of um, diagonal stripe that'll get book matched this will just be solid black drawn out cut put together with some more 15 and 20 shims um, and then the two of those will come to form this square billet that'll then be drawn out some the second larger billet is um, basically a W's but with only one stripe of 15 and 20 close to the edge and that is going to create this sort of a look and then I'm going to re-square that and that'll bring the center of this stripe up to being um, close to the point on one that'll bring the edges of these being down close to the corners after the re-square and then when I put that together um, into two for instance it would do that but for right now uh, I'm going to get this together, and I'm going to get the two blocks for this. Then I'm going to combine those two. This looks like this, and this will get that and then look like that. I'm going to combine those and then bias forge them to get this. And then the plan will be that after four weighing, we'll get a pattern with two different types of stars, an eight-point eight small squiggly star and a large uh, four-point I forget what this is called. Some Maltese cross. No, it's not a Maltese cross. It's like a sailor's cross or something. Anyway, and then I'll just build that up real big until it gets out into a pattern uh, more like this one. And then that'll be the mosaic for the two big knives. And I'm planning a bolo knife and a machete knife. Uh, and so this billet is going to have to be big enough for two quite large blades. And I'll probably do edge bars too just to stretch the stock and make them a little fancier. And uh, let's walk over here real quick. And this is the steel, the three billets that I have started. This is the big W's billet with the single stripe. This is the billet that's going to get biased for the diagonal stripe, smaller pieces, and then this is solid black. And then as a reserve, I've got a bunch of prepped 15 and 20 here, and then just more 1080 I can hack into as necessary. So that's the plan. Alrighty, so here we're grabbing the billet with the middle 15 and 20 stripe. Dunking that in the quench oil container. I like to use the quench oil because it gives it a, uh, a thicker carbon jacket than kerosene does and because it's convenient to use. I have more of that particular Glock, um, Glock quench A quench oil. Got it for cheap and throw it in the fire. You can see the oil starting to burn off there. Got nice and hot, soaked it at 2165 and now it's time to weld it up under the bowdry. We're forging at a nice leisurely pace for the bowdry. 
I could be hitting it way harder and faster and get the work done faster, but that's not going to give me the distortion that I want, or rather lack of distortion that I want. Much better to kind of be um, measured at, at your pace with stuff like this. Coming back out, now we are going for the re-square. So this is just a 45 degree re-square to get that 15 and 20 stripe. Um, instead of being parallel with the sides across the middle, now it is going to finish up being diagonal from corner to corner across the new smaller square cross section that we're forging in. Pretty typical operation for mosaic Damascus forging. Some people will call it forging on the bias, which may be greater or lesser than 45 degrees, or just at 45, depending on the effect you want. And Or you might just call it a re-square. Re-square typically would mean a 45. But uh, either way, it just turns the pattern elements and can do interesting things, as you'll see, um, in terms of creating line elements or uh, premeditated pattern shapes. I like to finish up the re-square lengthways on the die um, because what I'm re not really trying to do is draw this out. The drawing out is a byproduct of the re-squaring operation. In fact, you want to get your re-square done while you still have a fairly heavy billet cross section so that you don't end up with too long and skinny of a bar to then um, chop into four and uh, recombine. If you want to keep all your cross sections heavy, it's best to do all your, you know, get a weld until you know it's good, but then right afterwards start the re-square without any drawing per se first, and then try to get your re-square before it's too drawn out. But you do need to have it have um, as crisp of corners as you can manage and as even of a cross-sectional thickness as you can manage um, because you're just going to get better mating surfaces for your, your next welds and you'll have to do less grinding to get there the crisper your bar is and actually right now we're pretty much planishing square corners onto the bar it works better sometimes at a lower heat with more force because you're really trying to have more of a surface effect on the bar than a core effect and draw it out I had gotten to almost square sharp corners on the last heat, but it wasn't quite good enough, so I figured I'd give it one more heat, a little bit lower of a heat this time, and uh, make sure it was good and proper. You can see me beginning to draw it through the dies really quickly, maybe hit it in two or three strokes total. That way it's drawing out as little as possible, and I'm really planishing it more. The greater the surface contact of the dies, the more of a planishing blow it is, and the less of a drawing blow. The bigger the bites would be another way to put it. Now I'm just going to start hitting it softer and softer, and try to keep it pretty nice and straight as I finish up this heat. And I say square, but I mean squared corners and orthogonal um, parallel sides and stuff, but and 90 degree corners, but really it's a, a rectangular cross section. I re-squared it square, and then I forged it out somewhat rectangular, and uh, you'll see why in subsequent steps.
Now this is a little interesting. You can see I'm using the bar that I had just forged. I let it cool down and now I'm using it as a kiss block so I can match the height of it um, at when I finish forging the dimensions on the other bar because these are going to have to play well together in, in the next stack up. Um, the bar that's hot right now needs to be the same height as the bar next to it from one dimension but it needs to be narrower than it from another dimension and you'll see <clears throat> why actually down the road a little bit as well but this is a trick that you can use for sizing previously forged elements to currently being forged elements Here I'm forge welding the largest stack of the three. This is the stack that's a modified um, C bar. It's going to be a W's bar down the road, 12, 12 layers of W's, but right now we're working on that first C. Almost the entire billet is black, it's just got that heavy stripe of asymmetrical 15 and 20 off to one side. So right now I'm just getting a weld on the first heat and drawing it out to a pretty heavy square section. So a lot of the time I like to, when I'm forming C's for W's, do most of the drawing out while it's still in a square format so that I'm pretty close to drawn out as far as I need to be for the final dimension that I want um, before I start buckling the billet and forging it sideways. Here we go with the sideways forge. We've biased it to 45 degrees. We're forging the corners down. It's becoming octagonal. Once we've got a pretty heavy octagonal cross-section forged into it, we're going to roll it back to 90 degrees to the original orientation so that the original layers are now running vertical. And we're going to start smashing them down. But since we've forged the corners in, that really promotes the um, top and bottom corners of the C to really kind of stretch and reach around the billet and become curved. And once I have achieved pretty near squareness, well, once I've achieved an octagon cross section and then start crushing the C's, after a while I begin forging it into a long rectangle and then just take the sides down square only as much as necessary because I don't want to undo that nice crushing that I put to create the C. I tend to do that along the die so I'm really planishing it more than having an effect into the core of the material. And I will leave the corners a little bit rounded if I have to because I really really want to still promote that good buckling of the layers in the core of the bar.
Took one more heat here just to true the bar up a little bit more in terms of thickness on the flat surfaces so that'll become the stack. Hitting it pretty hard on the flats. Not riding the edges very long. I've got the camera sitting on some old welding gloves, the tripod, so it's improved the bounce of the camera, but it hasn't taken it all out, of course. Um, I'm going to get a gimbal mount for my phone when budget permits here. So I reached a good stopping point for my foraging for the morning there and then decided to look out the shop doors and see what was going on. Took a vertical video because I kind of wanted to show the tops of my old 47 Fords in the background and um, you can look up behind that mule deer about to cross the fence and you can see that square promontory of rock on the edge of that um, Carter Mountain over there across the highway from my shop. It's really beautiful where I live. I'm, I'm super fortunate to have a shop where I do. It's kind of arid pine forest and lots of sage. Very western. So both of these bars are going to get chopped into two pieces. Two pieces from each bar for a total of four pieces. So just measuring that out with a sharpie here and then we'll go over to the chop saw. You guys have seen me chop bars before on this thing and you're going to see it more, but I kind of like, I like, like to leave some of the verisimilitude and honesty of, of just the work involved in my videos so people can have an idea that it's not all, it's not all, um, you know, high fives and fun times. It's, it's also just a lot of cutting through bars and eating grit and noisy hard work. Now wait till you get to the hand sanding portion of my videos. That's that's where the real glamour is at. Now here's the W's bar that I forged. And actually, I kind of... Uh, I believe I welded this off camera. I welded four layers of it off camera and here I'm cutting it up into three layers for a final layer count of 12 layers of C's. I made the one mark so I can get to my um, depth stop on the saw, but after that it'll just give me the next cut automatically. Okay, so we're reaching another restack or recombo. So I made this and then I cut it to make those, and then those are these two. And then I made this, a solid 1080 billet. I forged it out with these as a step block for the height, but then forged the width a little narrower, so when I add these 15 and 20 shims between these two guys on the top, then they will equal the width of this in the assembly. So you can see, I did okay with my diagonal 15 and 20 stripe. It got a little squiggle to it when I crushed it down, but
but uh, that's not a deal breaker for this pattern. If anything, it just makes it a little bit more organic, a little more funky, not too funky though. So we're gonna, now I'm going to custom cut um, some strips, probably three, four tops, strips of 15 and 20 to fit between those two top blocks. Then we'll grind the mating surfaces of everything on the surface grinder. And then, uh, and then I've got to continue with this stack. So off camera, I did the forge weld uh, for a four stack of these. So basically that, and then I'm going to triple this bar up to get a final bar of 12 layers of asymmetrical C's. So coming over to the surface grinder, you can see I've got three five inch bars, which combined will yield the 12 layers of C's. I'm gonna grind those up, tack them up. We'll have a look at that, and then I'll show some of the hammer work for all of this stuff. So that's where we're at. Yep, just more time standing in front of the surface grinder. We're match grinding the faces of these four bars that are going to make up the top part of the um, star pattern in the stack. I'll take those two bars on the right off pretty soon. And so here we have the three bars of, of uh, four layers of C's tacked up for 12 layers on the next weld. Here we have two bars. I clamp them together so <clears throat> the two already ground faces are inside there, clamped together, and then I'm going to get a good 90 degree reference to the top when I grind that. And those will become the inside corners of a four-way sort of arrangement in the billet. Um, here we are welding the um, final 12 layers of W's. Many times on a restack weld like that, when I have three or four thicker chunks of material, I'll do a short heat first to crush everything together and start the weld, but then I'll, with it still quite hot after only a few seconds of hammering, I'll put it back in the forge, give it a good soak, and then really give it a lot more hammering on the second weld. Seems to get better edges <clears throat> for me, less uh, lines along any seams, especially in harder stuff to weld like Crew Forge V. So with the 12 layers of W's here, I forged it out square and heavy. Now we're going right into re-squaring it. So the W's are all to one side of this bar, fairly close to one side. So now I'm making it to where I have um, like explodey points rounding the corner of one side of the billet with the rest of the billet black. And uh, you'll see that as a test edge in the next video, most likely. But I'm just re-squaring it to start the beginning of a star or explosion type element. Um, with the W's that I created. So once again, I've gotten it pretty far and then I'm just finishing it up, planishing the corners square. 
lengthwise through the dies here like normal. So after I got this bar all planished out, pretty even in thickness, fully square, sharp corners, I'll just let that cool down. That was the end of forging for the day. It was about 6.30 p.m. and time to go in for the night, cook some dinner, grill something up, and recharge for the next day. Thanks for staying with me this far, and uh, a lot more interesting content to come in the next installment.